Hey everybody, we have another response video for you here from I Know Not Who, but he talks about confrontation and therapy, which I don't care so much about, but what I do care about is how this video exposes the complete lack of fundamental thinking, of failure to think in first principles that is ubiquitous in the field of psychology. And if the field is going to have a future in 100 years, we need to figure this out and not worry so much about superfluous issues like whether to be confrontational. All right, let's see what he has to say. Well, we've been talking about the contributions of uh, Michael White. Uh, as we mentioned last time, uh, White is interesting because he straddled this sort of old-style way that we had interpreted uh, addiction and recovery from basically the 1970s when he started his career to the introduction of science that really got on a roll in the 1990s. <clears throat> so he's an interesting uh, interesting person because he's seen both sides of this uh, and was particularly interested in, in the new ideas that were being promoted by uh, actual research in the field and what does and doesn't work. And one of the things that he wanted to tackle because he found this quite offensive was the idea that in therapy with people suffering from substance problems, you needed to be really confrontational with them. And this is, again, based on this older approach to it. The, the older approach says, uh, look, at, uh, you know, the person with an addiction is in denial. Uh, they all have like narcissistic personality traits. At the same time, they have inferiority complexes. And there was sort of a, a way of looking at the a person with an addiction as, as a specific personality. And then the argument was, how do you break through this? How do you break through denial? Well, you have to confront them. So anytime they say something that really doesn't fit the mold of getting into recovery, like, uh, geez, you know, I don't know. I think, yeah, I think maybe I'll have a drink again. Then we just like jump on the person, right? In, in the actual therapy, it would be called something like, you know, call the client on his stuff, right? Something al along that line. And, all, and confrontation. And what's the error he is making here? Right, he is conflating confrontation with being a jerk. Confrontation is merely speaking to the issue. doesn't mean you have to be a jerk about it. You can be confrontational while being really nice. You can also be a jerk without being confrontational. Regardless, this debate about how confrontational will be or whether to be confrontational is a distraction from the real debate, which is, where does addiction come from? What causes addiction? He doesn't seem to understand, as indicated by... Well, I don't know. I have to infer that he's... a seems a little bit confused. How could somebody with addiction be both narcissistic, have trace of NPD, narcissistic personality disorder, yet have an inferiority complex? Well, first you need to understand where narcissism comes from, which he doesn't really seem to. I'll link in the description that there's just a huge confusion about narcissism and what it is. It's really a lack of identity presenting as a really strong sense of self, but that's just the persona. Anyway, yeah, I'll link that in the description. But this is a great video because it, it just exposes that psychology is not dealing with fundamental issues. And now everybody is distracted by the relationship between the client and the psychologist. That's the most important. It doesn't matter what intervention you use. As long as the relationship between the client and the psychologist is good, well, that turns out to not be true either. It's all a distraction. Like addiction is a distraction from fundamental emotional issues, specifically around anxiety, things that we're avoiding Looking at the relationship between the client and the psychologist is all a distraction from not really being able to figure out fundamental issues of psychology, perhaps even a unifying factor of our psychology, as Jung would say. And until we can understand emotions for exactly what they are and exactly how they work and exactly how they relate with our decisions, then we're going to get lost in these go-nowhere discussions full of conflation and not understanding fundamental issues in psychology like narcissism for what they really are. Continuing. Actually written into the treatment models. And there would actually be special groups held that just, and actually some of them were even called confrontation groups. And this is quite offensive to uh, William White because he didn't think that this is actually very therapeutic. 
And when he and another fellow called William Miller, one of the renowned experts in the field, got together, they wrote a, they wrote a paper on this. And, and they showed that every, every research study that had looked at confrontation in uh, therapy showed that, one, it was ineffective, and two, it probably bordered on malpractice. And with some groups, such as women who had been abused, uh, people like that, that it was actually abusive and did constitute malpractice. And this kind of idea really, uh, as I said, offended Michael White. Also pay attention to the language he's using. The idea of confrontation was offensive to this guy, Michael White. And then he went on to do research, in a sense, to prove his own sensibility, to validate his own sensibility. Of course, you're going to find research that validates your own sensibility. You find whatever you're looking for. He's essentially explaining the mechanism behind the replication crisis in psychology. You have a sensibility, you get offended, and without thinking about it, without understanding how you can be confrontational, speak directly to an issue, without being mean necessarily, even while being really nice and kind, gentle honesty, just go and find research to validate how you feel as opposed to what's really going on. But again, it's all distraction from not understanding fundamentals of psychology. Continuing. And so he promoted this idea that we should get rid of confrontation as a style of counseling. Although, of course, I mean, confrontation here and there can be very useful and is a good technique. But just as a style of counseling, we should eliminate it because it really was abusive when, when we look at it. Oh, of course, confrontation here and there can be useful. Essentially, what he is saying is speaking directly to the issue can be useful. Maybe it matters more what you're speaking to than how you're actually doing it. But this involves a real thinking, perhaps philosophical thinking that we've done here at Animus Empire, deconstructed emotions, exactly what they are, exactly how they work, and we built therapy based on this. So we can get to the root of your psychological issue in a handful of sessions and then give you all the tools that you will need to work through the issue on your own. Just get right to, and I can do this, not because I'm nice. I am a nice guy. But it has nothing to do with being nice and everything to do with speaking directly to the issue. Animusempire.com slash schedule free 30-minute consultations. I'll leave it there. Thank you for watching. Links in the description. Tell a friend. And I encourage you to be extremely confrontational with everybody you meet today. But that doesn't mean you got to be a jerk.